Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Um, my name is Darren Crouch. I'm the president and co-founder of Passages International. And uh, I'd like to thank you for taking some time out of your day to join us for the last of this year is continuing the conversation on webinar series that we've uh, created for you. And this week's um, uh, webinar is really gonna focus on, on a culmination of a lot of what we've discussed this year um, and really hone in on bring value uh, to the Cremacia consumer. And so I'm going to look a little bit about, you know, what uh, what most funeral homes crematories are, are currently offering to families and provide some ideas that hopefully will um, enable you to create packages or create products or create services for your cremation families uh, that have value for them and allow you to remain relevant um, in this changing um, cremation landscape. So in the past, we've, we've focused on um, scattering solutions for families. We've looked at scattering on water, which is very popular for families who have selected for cremation. Uh, we've done demonstrations on our bio tree urns. We've also um, done product de demonstrations on our scattering tubes. Um, and we've also focused on our earth uh, burial earth urns. Um, so for those of you that are not familiar with Passages International, we were founded in 1999. We started in the back of a funeral home. Um, and the initial concept was to provide families with a eco-friendly alternative to traditional options that we found many, many families were rejecting. Um, we had families coming into the funeral home um, in S-Class Mercedes, demonstrating they had ample resources, but they were selecting um, or ending up with a cardboard or a plastic box back in those days. It didn't matter what urn selection we had, didn't matter what price point, how we merchandise it. Um, families that had means uh, were opting for something that basically we couldn't charge for. Um, and so we were founded in the funeral home. And over the last 20 years, we've really um, focused on helping funeral professionals meet the changing demands of families. Um, our brand is very well known for eco-friendly and biodegradable options, and that's essentially all we sell, but we really see ourselves as, as a solution uh, for funeral homes struggling to cater to the changing consumer. Um, and when we started the business, cremation was only 25%. 75% uh, of families were opting to bury. Um, but today, as you all know, and we'll see a little, uh, in a little while, cremation is well over um, 50%. And probably in some of the markets that you operate in, it could be as high as 70 or 80 percent. Um, but we see ourselves as also creating products um, that allow families to create a different type of experience um, in order to honor their loved one. Uh, so much of what we see in, in the movies and what, what people picture in their minds as a funeral uh, looks boring. It's 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 in the pouring rain. It doesn't look appealing. And I think if we're honest with ourselves, most consumers today do not find that consumer. Consequently, we're looking at a, a large growth in cremation. Uh, I think it's very, very important to focus on the data. And so a couple of the next slides that I want to show you are our data slides that really demonstrate what, um, what the market looks like today and what families are telling um, us that they intend to do with cremated remains and telling us why they um, are sec selecting the, the, mean, the method of disposition, disposition they are selecting. Um, and so a couple of these quotes, I think, really drive that point home that, you know, if you are not looking at the data and you're making decisions, then you're probably just getting lucky um, if you're just guessing. So obviously, as I've mentioned, consumer preferences have changed. This is from the NFDA's 2020 Consumer Preferences Survey. And you can see that the largest percentage of consumers and, uh, intend to cremate. Um, about 22% say they are going to select casketed burial, and about 15% say they're not sure. If you add those two totals together, you're pretty close, the not sure and the families that intend to cremate you're pretty close to the national average of where cremation is today, which I think is around 55%. Um, you can see there's been a huge increase in, in families looking for or interested in green burial, 14%, that's pretty significant. 
Um, and now human composting is on our radar as well. So um, for those of you that have been in the business a long time, uh, you will have seen that shift away from traditional burial to cremation. Um, and I think the, the products and services that we need to be offering those consumers is very, very different. I think part of the reason people choose cremation, um, obviously we'll, we'll talk about that a little bit more in, in, in a moment, but one of the main reasons is a, is a rejection of tradition. And so, so much of what I see in funeral homes offered to cremation families still looks very traditional. And I think it's no surprise that those families are uh, not selecting those products and services. Um, so, you know, according to the data, uh, um, a large percentage of, of families are choosing cremation because they believe it's more because it's more cost effective. Uh, simplicity is obviously a big one. Uh, people don't want to be buried. Um, there's also the environmentally friendly aspect of cremation. I think people consider uh, cremation to be greener, uh, less re resources are used, ashes to ashes, dust to dust. Um, but we've also talked in this um, presentation series about um, the values of cremation consumers. Um, so much about the funeral industry has been about preservation of the body, preparing the body, uh, setting the features, doing the makeup, all of those types of things. And what the data is telling us from the Cana uh, and Homestead as focus groups is that cremation consumers are not really interested in the body itself. They're not interested in the dead body. So it doesn't really matter if you're setting features, doing makeup. Yes, they expect you to have a certain level of dignity and treat that deceased individual with respect and dignity, but they're more, they're more interested in remembering the life that person lived. And so I think it's really important as you deal with cremation families, if they're rejecting your offer of embalming or visitation or open casket prior to cremation, the reason for that is because they're less interested in the body and more interested in remembering that person as they lived, birthday parties, special occasions, um, those types of things. Um, I think we all know that cremation provides simplicity. Um, and, and, I, and I think one of the insights that came out of this, this survey as well is that, um, you know, consumers believe they can do a lot of what's involved in cremation or a funeral other than the cremation itself. And so I think we need to be very careful as we move forward in the next several years that we're able to provide value to families and they don't think that they can go and do all of this on their own. I would say at the moment, for the most part, in terms of uh, storage of the body and disposition, the actual cremation itself, families can do almost everything on their own. And um, as that becomes more widespread, then it's really, really important that you're able to provide products and services that deliver, to deliver value to families. Otherwise you run the risk of becoming irrelevant. So where are we currently? Well, uh, I think most of you will agree that this is probably a pretty good representation of the type of products that families are encountering when it comes to cremation. Uh, I don't know the statistics and I'm not sure if there's been any studies on this, but I've talked to funeral homes that, for example, do a thousand cremations. And of those thousand cremations, they've sold three caskets that weren't cardboard boxes. And so I think if you guys look at your businesses, you're going to find that the vast majority of families are opting for the least expensive basic cardboard box. And one of the reasons for that is because they don't see any, they don't see value in any of the other products. Obviously they don't need a casket because they're, that the, the, the product's going to be cremated and burned. Um, but most other options that are not wood that are under a thousand dollars, for example, retail at the funeral home, are basically cardboard. Either it's a cloth covered cardboard, a cardboard with a printed veneer, uh, a cardboard with an upgraded lining in it. Um, the consumer looks right through that and all they see is cardboard. And consequently, what they do is they choose the cheapest cardboard. And so I'm gonna show you some, some products that we offer that we believe build value back in and your staff can actually defend the price of it. Because what we find is, you know, family comes into a funeral home, they're presented with a cloth covered or a transporter and maybe it's three or four hundred dollars or eight or nine hundred dollars whatever the product is but it's very difficult for the the funeral director to defend the value of that product because there essentially is no value oh you can say it's a you know um a polyester lining <laughs> that there's no value in a polyester lining to a family or a, a pillow there's no value in that 
So, you know, my argument is what, what, we're, what most families are encountering today when they go into a funeral home and select cremation are very unappealing choices with very little value. Um, it's very difficult to justify the cost of the items, even if it's a $195 cardboard box. You know, you get a refrigerator in a cardboard box like that. Families know it doesn't cost $195. Um, I think even though you tell families that if they're not selecting anything else, it is a basic cardboard box, I think they're still surprised and disappointed if and when they actually see that product. Uh, and I think one of the most important things is you're leaving a lot of money on the table. Um, I don't believe that anybody wants to put their loved one in a cardboard box. I believe they choose that because it's the least of the evils and uh, they don't see any point in choosing anything more expensive uh, than the basic cardboard box, but it's definitely something they would not choose if there are other options. The other thing is there's very negative environmentally, uh, very environmental impacts of a lot of these products. Uh, and we've done some uh, independent lab testing on many of these products and the products I'm gonna show you are much, much cleaner, uh, more environmentally friendly. So the products that we introduced this year are our, our simple bamboo container and our full point bamboo casket on the right hand side. And the simple bamboo on the left is a product that we sell for as low as $2.95 uh, when a funeral home buys 10. And we have funeral homes selling them for four 95 or 595, depending on the market that you're in. Um, but what we're finding is um, funeral homes are actually able to eliminate a lot of the cardboard. And we actually have some funeral homes that the container on the left is the entry level product. There is nothing below it. Um, I believe that most of the regulations in your state require that you offer a minimum container. They don't say the minimum container has to be cardboard. And so the container on the left, we've stripped a lot of the cost out of it. So there's no lining in it, for example, it's a bit more low profile. It doesn't have a pillow. It has a simple bamboo headrest. Uh, it ships flat pack and I'll talk about that a little bit more. Um, but these are products that, that have been very successful uh, in the funeral home, replacing a lot of cardboard options. So these two products that I showed you are sustainably produced. The bamboo grows very near to the factory. It's not cultivated bamboo, it grows wild and we harvest it and process it in a couple of processing facilities. Um, they're both certified fair trade, which again leads into the value that I mentioned. If a family says, why is this product $595? You can talk about the fair trade nature of the product. Um, you know, and part of the fair trade principles are, you know, these products are created in, in uh, we're creating opportunity in economically disadvantaged areas. So um, about 50% of the manufacturing team is female. Uh, many of them have never been to school. And so we're actually teaching them skills they wouldn't learn at home. Some of them can't read and write. Some of them can't even uh, tell the time. Um, uh, fair wages are paid, which is roughly 30% higher than comparable work in that, in that locale. Um, you know, we insist on transparency and accountability. Uh, and we re report to uh, multiple oversight organizations. Uh, we allow workers to organize and, and have representation. Um, you know, all of the workers are adults. We don't employ children. Uh, it's a healthy working environment, blah, 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 blah. So there's a lot of uh, features in terms of, in terms of fair trade that you can communicate to build value around these products for, for your families. Um, the other thing about both of the products that are bamboo is they actually ship flat packed. And so we can get three or four units in the space that we would ordinarily ship a traditional casket in. Um, they take about 10 or 15 minutes to assemble. Um, and because we ship them flat pack, obviously that reduces our costs. And so we're able to pass them along to you at a more reduced cost. And it also keeps our carbon emissions and uh, carbon footprint low. Uh, another benefit to you is if you're storing these at your facility, you know, to keep 10 cremation uh, simple bamboo containers uh, only takes the footprint of about two caskets, three caskets. Uh, and I apologize, the video is a little choppy there, but it does show them being assembled. Uh, and once you're assembling, you know, these on a regular basis, it's, it's literally 10 or 15 minutes to assemble them. Uh, as I mentioned previously, we have had these, uh, the two cremation units uh, lab tested against um, some other products in the market, some basic camp bamboo, um, some upgrade, sorry, some um, some basic cardboard, some upgraded cardboard, some cloth covers. Uh, and we found that they cremated at a lower temperature, which will save you energy on your energy bill. 
uh, they emit a clean white smoke versus a dark smoke, which, which a lot of the other containers uh, release. Uh, they only release uh, water, oxygen, and carbon dioxide when they're burned compared to some carcinogenic styrenes that are emitted uh, when um, more traditional cremation uh, containers made of cardboard um, or other substrates are cremated. Uh, so it doesn't emit the high weight polymers uh, and carcinogens. Also, uh, we also found that when, when the bamboo containers are cremated, there's less residue left in the cremation chamber. And so the family is actually getting uh, a purer set of remains returned to them. So I mentioned earlier that we did a case study. We have a local funeral home here in Albuquerque that does over a thousand cremations a year. Um, and they actually took out five cardboard options. Pretty much everything under $1,000 in their selection room was removed. And they now offer the, the simple bamboo container at 595, I believe, and the four point bamboo container at, uh, I think it's eight or 995. And then they go to a simple wood at 11 or 1295. Um, but they've able to bring they've been able to bring almost two hundred thousand dollars to their bottom line, uh, so it's a huge increase in revenue um, on the on the container sales of these two containers, and we've seen improved customer satisfaction. I think one of the reasons is because customers understand the value of bamboo, and it's very easy for the staff to communicate that. They can talk about the fact that it ships flat pack and there's a low carbon footprint. They can talk about the fact that it's fair trade and they can actually get into some of the specifics of the fair trade. They can talk about the facts that, it, that it's clean burning. They can talk about the fact um, that it's from a sustainable resource. And you can see that you don't have to go very far down that list of features when you're communicating with families for them to very quickly understand the benefits of this product. And really what we found is with this funeral home, the staff is really behind it. I'll, I'll be honest and I'll say when we introduced the product, they were skeptical. I mean, there's, it's very different. It's um, unlike anything else in the market. But what I would say is it's, it may be uncomfortable and different for the funeral professional, but it's very comfortable for the consumer. The consumer understands it, they appreciate it. And you know, now you're not putting your staff in a position where they have to justify a two or 300 or $400 price tag for a cardboard box. Um, which basically has no features uh, that can be used to justify that price. With these bamboo containers, it's very, very easy to justify the selling price, and we've had tremendous results with them. <clears throat> the other thing that I would say, so, so I think the first thing, the, one of the first places to, to try to build value in, into the cremation uh, sale is in the container that you're offering to cremate the body in. I'd say the second thing that you can look at is is the service and the facilities that you have. So for example, I believe if you have a state-of-the-art crematory and a state-of-the-art uh, witnessing cremation area, then you should be marketing that. Uh, and you should be selling the fact that your cremation equipment um, uses much less uh, fuel. You should be selling the fact that it cremates more purely. You should be selling the fact that um, the technology in the in the in the chimney reduces a lot of emissions. You should be selling the fact that you're part of the community and you care about what goes into the environment and what people are, are breathing in. Um, but if you have a witness cremation area, it's more important that you have a good selection uh, of casket options for cremation. Um, there'd be nothing worse than you spending, you know, 500,000, a million, $2 million, whatever you're spending on creating this very unique area where people can participate and witness and start the cremation process only to put a basic cardboard box or a uh, an ugly cloth covered uh, on for that uh, that service and so the bamboo containers that i mentioned really work very well with the witness cremations as well but as i mentioned i would really be focusing on marketing the fact that you have these facilities and equipment if you have more um, if you have more contemporary newer equipment that has added features. And I think it's it's reasonable to market the fact that you've invested in equipment um, that does these things for the better of the of the environment and also the better of the family. Um, so yeah, as I mentioned previously, you know, you are part of the community. Um, I'm sure many of you have funeral homes that are in somewhat residential areas. And I think if you're able to uh, purchase equipment that has better filtration. It's an upgrade on basic uh, on basic crematory equipment. 
Uh, it has mercury abatement. Uh, I was really surprised when we co-hosted the first um, green conference here in Albuquerque with Cana uh, last year. And we had some of the crematory manufacturers come to the, the green conference. I was really surprised at the technology they have um, that they're not deploying at the moment. And I think it's really doing a disservice to you because if they were to deploy that technology, even if it is at a higher price point, that's, a, that's an add-on that you can communicate to families that says, hey, crema my cremation price is $3,000 because I've invested this equipment that doesn't do this, doesn't do that, does do this. Uh, and you can list off the benefits. So where do the cremated remains go? Um, We've looked at, you know, what to put the body in for cremation. We've looked at maybe touching on some of the equipment or facilities that might help you uh, build value into the cremation. But I think you need to be looking at the data that really explores what families are doing with cremated remains. When I go to so many funeral homes, I walk in their selection room and I see like 50 different bronze, marble, wood, ceramic, glass urns. And they're designed to be either interred in a cemetery or kept at home. But what you can see from this pie chart here is the vast majority of people are not doing that. And so if a family that intends to scatter comes into your selection room and you have one scattering product or two scattering products or five scattering products out of 50, it's not going to be any surprise when they walk out either with something that they don't want and are dissatisfied or they opt for the minimum cardboard or plastic box. And you can see that people are telling us, 43% of people, according to the 2020 consumer survey from the NFDA, they're telling us they intend to scatter. 18% say they have no preference, but I would guarantee that at least half, if not all of those people ultimately end up scattering as well. And I would say the same is true of the 7.6% that say other. So you can see by this that almost 75% of families uh, intend to scatter. So it's really, really important that you have a significant selection of products. Um, so here, this is a funeral home that's that's very progressive. You can see that this is a list of the, the urns that they have on their GPL, and probably five or 10 out of 50 um, are either what I would describe as alternative or eco-friendly or suitable for scattering. Um, and as you can see, if a family is not choosing one of those five or six items, they're most likely going to end up with a plastic box. And whether you give that plastic box away, charge $25, charge $50, you're leaving a lot of money on the table because that family may have spent four or $500 uh, on an eco-friendly urn or a scattering urn. Um, you know, just because you might think, you know, no one's going to spend $400 on a, you know, handmade paper turtle doesn't mean that a family won't do that. And we're seeing that families do do that uh, on a regular basis, and I'll talk a bit more about that later. So as you can see from this slide, you know, we have a lot of options. Um, obviously, we're not the only company uh, that has alternative options and eco-friendly options and scattering products. Um, but we have a large selection that is designed for families that want to do something completely different. Uh, we have products that go in the water, which are on the left-hand side there, the turtle, the shell, uh, the sand dollar and the journeys that you see on the left-hand side. We have over 20 different scatter tube designs and most of them come in more than two sizes. Um, we have urns that you can uh, grow a tree in. Um, and we also have urns that you can bury in the ground or you can keep at home. Um, but these are the types of products that you should be looking at. And because the, these are the types of products that are gonna appeal to that 50 or 60% of your cremation families that intend to scatter. And some of these products, they're going to range retail. You're probably going to retail them from, you know, $79 to $99, depending on the product in the market, all the way up to four or $500, depending on the product in your market. Um, and so you can see, you know, these are not inexpensive products and they can impact your bottom line significantly if you're able to have families purchase something like this versus ending up giving them a plastic or a cardboard box. Um, the other thing that I would really be thinking about is, and, and talking to families about, is the experience they want to create. You know, the product itself becomes somewhat irrelevant. What is relevant to the family is how are they going to remember that loved one? Are they going to go down to the beach at sunset and scatter those remains? Are they going to book a whale watching cruise and invite 50 of their friends and then place an urn at sea that will biodegrade? Are they going to go out in their private yacht? 
what are they going to do with with the remains and so if you know what they're going to do with the remains and you know the kind of experience that they want to have and you're able to sell them on that experience then then the product becomes then the price tag becomes irrelevant um, because they're so sold on the experience and and so many of these experiences um, I would describe as priceless. I mean, we've had families that have purchased that turtle in the top left corner of your screen. They've decorated it, they've put it in the ocean. Uh, and when they actually put it in the ocean, a real turtle swam up next to them. Uh, the journey earthen, which is sort of towards the bottom left, it's sort of a purple color. We had families buy 50 of those, invite 50 of their friends on a whale watching cruise, ride on the urn. And then we have photographs of 50 of those urns airborne off the side of a boat off the coast of Maui. And those are experiences that those families will never forget. And the price tag of the product becomes irrelevant. And they're always, they're always gonna remember that you helped them create this experience that they wanted to create to remember their loved one. So it's really important to align with the consumers. I'd say, you know, the photo on the right kind of shows what a traditional selection room looks like today. And as I've mentioned before, heavily traditional based. Um, the, the two photos on the left really represent what your selection room could look like. And I know the photos on the left, those are custom displays, but you can create something similar for a fraction of the cost and offer families a comprehensive selection of alternative products um, that would, are going to result in you increasing your revenues and remaining relevant. So as I mentioned before, sell, sell the sizzle, the photo on the bottom uh, middle really show that's an actual live photo or an actual photo from a family that shows all those urns airborne off the coast off the coast of Maui. Um, and I also wanted, I know we have a few more minutes, we're gonna wrap up here, but I also wanted to talk about the experience. If you can sell the sizzle, sell the experience, um, you're gonna have a lot of success selling the products. And we are working on a program where we're helping you with merchandising ideas. And we, we basically, we've co coined it up, where do you wanna be remembered? Uh, program where we're able to provide you with booklets, with uh, merchandising posters um, that will help you sell the experience. And yes, there's product in those booklets. And yes, there's product on those displays, on those posters. But really, the, the focus is on selling the experience that the family can create with the products. And if you can create that, then you're going to be success successful selling these products. So to wrap up, we talked about the container that the, the body goes in. We talked about the equipment and the facilities. Uh, and we talked about the container that the cremated remains in going afterwards. And really looking to expand your selection of offerings, um, both uh, in terms of bamboo uh, cremation options for the body and a more comprehensive selection of non-traditional, alternative, eco-friendly scattering products for that 50 plus percent of families um, that intend to scatter remains after um, the cremation has taken place. Um, and so that brings me to the end. I think we're almost at half an hour. And so, you know, if you have any experiences that you'd like to share with us, please do. I think Anais can uh, uh, unmute you or please feel free to share your experiences. Uh, if you're interested in working with us to develop or implement some of these ideas at your funeral home, you can either reach out to me uh, at Darren at passagesinternational.com. You can call the office at 505-830-2500. Um, please follow us on Facebook. You can follow us on Twitter as well. Uh, and I think Anis will have this uh, probably on our website recorded as well, um, if you would like to, um, to view it or share it. So if anyone has any questions, I'm happy to, to take those now. All right, well, I thank you so much for spending part of your day with me and uh, we'll be doing this again next year. And I wish you a very happy holiday season. I appreciate your business and uh, have a great rest of your day. Thank you.